This theory video looks at diatonic intervals. Diatonic intervals are the ways in which we map the distance between two notes. The relationship is measured from the lowest note to the highest note. There are five types of diatonic intervals. Major intervals, perfect intervals, minor intervals, augmented intervals, and diminished intervals. In this first video, we are going to look at the first three categories of intervals, major, perfect, and minor. Interval types one and two, major and perfect intervals. Major and perfect intervals are the way that we map the root or tonic note of a scale to another note in the major scale. However, there is one difference between a major and a perfect interval. Major intervals have a little brother or sister called minor intervals. Perfect intervals do not. There are four types of perfect intervals. Perfect unison, where the tonic note is repeated. Perfect fourth, the tonic note to the fourth note in the major scale. Perfect fifth, the tonic to the fifth note in the major scale. And a perfect octave, the tonic to the eighth note in the major scale. And there are four major intervals. A major second, tonic to the second note in the major scale. A major third, the tonic to the third note in the major scale. A major sixth, the tonic to the sixth note in the major scale. And a major seventh, the tonic to the seventh note of the major scale. A perfect unison interval is the tonic note repeated twice. So I have a G major scale. If I repeat the tonic note or the first note twice, I have a G unison. And when presenting this unison on a stave, you write the tonic note twice next to each other, so it looks like this. A major second interval is mapping the tonic note to the second note of the scale. So using a G major scale, I go from the first note, which is G, to the second note, which is A. So a major second above G is A. And when presenting them on the stave, you stack the two notes on top of each other, so it looks like this. A major third interval is mapping the tonic note to the third note of the scale. So with my G major scale, I go from the first note, the G, to the third note, the B. So a major third above G is B. And when presenting them on the stave, you stack the notes on top of each other, so they look like this. A perfect fourth interval is mapping the tonic note to the fourth note of the scale. So with my G major scale again, I go from the first note, which is the G, to the fourth note, which is the C and a perfect fourth above G is C. When presenting them on the stave, I stack them on top of each other so they look like this. You can see a pattern emerging. A perfect fifth interval is mapping the tonic to the fifth note of the scale. So I go from the first note of the G major scale, which is G, to the fifth note of the G major scale, which is D. So a perfect fifth above G is D. And yet again, when I present them on the stave, I stack them and they look like this. A major sixth interval is mapping the tonic note to the sixth note of the major scale. So I go from the first note, which is G, to the sixth note of the major scale, which is E. So a major sixth interval above G is E. And presenting them on the stave, I once again stack them on top of each other so that they look like this. A major seventh interval is mapping the tonic note to the seventh note of the scale. So the first note, which is G, to the seventh note, which is F sharp. So a major seventh above G is F sharp. And when I present them on the stave, I stack them on top of each other so they look like this. A perfect octave interval is mapping the tonic note to the eighth note of the scale. So I go from the first note, which is G, to the eighth note, which is G. So a perfect octave above G is G. And when I present them on the stave, I stack them on top of each other, like this.
This method always works. This time we'll use D as the tonic to prove it. Perfect unison. I have my D major scale. I repeat the first note twice. Place them next to each other on the stave, like this. A major second interval is from my D major scale. I use the first note, which is D, to the second note, which is E. And on the stave, I stack them on top of each other. A major third interval is I go from the first note of D to the third note of the D major scale, which is F sharp. And I stack them on top of each other so it looks like this. A perfect fourth interval is from the D major scale. I go from the first note, which is D, to the fourth note, which is G. And on the stave, I stack them on top of each other. A perfect fifth interval is I go from the first note of the D major scale, which is D, to the fifth note of the D major scale, which is A, and I stack them on top of each other. You can see the process is directly translated, regardless of the key. A major sixth interval. I go to the first note of the D major scale, which is D, and I go to the sixth note, which is B, and I stack them on top of each other. A major seventh interval. I work from the first note of the D major scale, which is D, and I go to the seventh note of the D major scale, which is C sharp, and I stack them on top of each other. And last but not least, a perfect octave. I go from the first note of the D major scale, which is D, to the eighth note of the D major scale, which is D, and I stack them on top of each other. You can apply this method to any major scale to work out the major and perfect intervals within it. Interval type number three, minor intervals. To create a minor interval, you flatten the top note of a major interval. And there are four minor intervals. These minor intervals are the little brothers and sisters of major intervals. And to create minor intervals, all you need to do is flatten the top note of a major interval. So a minor second flattens the top note of a major second interval. A minor third flattens the top note of a major third interval. A minor sixth flattens the top note of a major sixth interval. And a minor seventh flattens the top note of a major seventh interval. So to write a minor second interval, step one is to work out a major second interval. So with our G major scale, we go from the first note, which is a G, to the second note, which is an A. And this gives us a major second interval, G to A. Step two is flatten the top note of the major second interval to create a minor second interval. So A becomes A flat. So the minor second above G is A flat. And step three, stack the notes on top of each other on the stave. So it looks like this. And you've created a minor second interval. To write a minor third interval, step one is we need to work out a major third interval. So from our G major scale, we go from the first note to the third note of the major scale to create our major third. So a major third above G is B. Step two is we flatten the top note of the major third to create the minor third. So B becomes B flat. So a minor third interval above G is B flat. And step three is stack the notes on top of each other on the stave so that it looks like this. To write a minor sixth interval, step one is we need to work out the major sixth interval. So we go from our first note of the G major scale, which is G, to the sixth note of the G major scale, which is E. So a major sixth interval above G is E. Step two is we flatten the top note of the major sixth interval to create the minor sixth interval. So E becomes E flat. So now our minor sixth interval above G is E flat. And step three. We once again stack the notes on top of each other on the stave so that it looks like this. To create a minor seventh interval, step one is we need to work out the major seventh interval. So with our G major scale, we go from the first note, which is G, to the seventh note, which is F sharp. 
So a major seventh above G is F sharp. Step two is we need to flatten the top note of the major seven to create the minor seven. So F sharp becomes F natural. So a minor seven above G is F. And step three is we stack these notes on top of each other on the stave. Remembering to put a natural sign next to the F to show that it's supposed to be an F natural, not an F sharp. And this method always works. Let's use D again to prove this. So there's our D major scale. Step one is we work out our major second. So we go from the first, which is D, to the second, which is E. And on the stave, it would look like this. To create the minor second, we flatten the top note of the major second, which is E. It becomes E flat. And we put that on the stave, so it looks like this. To create a major third interval, we go from the first note to the third note of the D major scale, so D to F sharp, and we put it on the stave, so it looks like this. To create the minor third, we take the top note of the major third, which is the F sharp, and we flatten it, so it becomes F. So D to F is our minor third interval, and we stack them on top of each other on the stave, so it looks like this. Remember to put the natural sign next to F. To create a major sixth interval, we go from the first note to the sixth note of the D major scale, so it's D to B, and we stack them on the stave like this. If we flatten the sixth note, which is the top note of the major interval, we end up with a B flat, and we have a minor sixth interval, D to B flat, and on the stave it looks like this. And finally, the major seventh interval, we go from the first note, which is D, to the seventh note, which is C sharp, and we place them on the stave like this. If we flatten the C sharp, which is the seventh note, or the top note of the major seventh interval, we end up with a minor seventh. C sharp becomes C, and on the stave, we show D to C natural, like this, and we have a minor seventh interval. As you can see, you can apply this method to any major interval in any key to work out its minor interval little brother or sister. A complete list of intervals in order from tonic note to the upper octave are perfect unison, minor second, major second, minor third, major third, perfect fourth, perfect fifth, minor sixth, major sixth, minor seventh, major seventh, and perfect octave. All these intervals are in order. And that's it. I hope you found this video useful and I hope you can now understand how all diatonic intervals, major, perfect and minor, apply in music theory. Thanks for watching.